We are going to tie a gurgler uh, on the Instagram, Facebook. We've been looking at saltwater flies, and you know, truly, this one, this is not you know original creation of mine at all. Um, if you look at 239 flies, Mr. Nick over there ties some of the cleanest saltwater flies we've seen, and so I kept looking at his his gurglers, and so uh, kind of you know made some modifications on some of the materials that we'll use but for the most part you know this is just a standard gurgler that you see uh, used for uh, you know any fish that's going to eat a gurgler in salt water I guess. Uh, we're going to start out with a Daiichi 2546 in the vise. This is a size 1 aught, and I'm going to dress the hook with some uh, Montana Fly 3 aught thread I'd ask this this uh, bobbin that I have is a Stonfo bobbin. It's one of their you know standard line bobbins. We we've, we've got them on the store. They actually work really well. It's a it's a you know synthetic tube that it goes through, so it won't nick like metal will. All right, for the tail on this, um, I really like uh, Arctic Fox, so instead of using craft fur, we're going to put Arctic Fox in it. Uh, I'm going to trim off a piece like this and just take these guard hairs and pull them out. So there we've got a pretty healthy chunk of uh, Arctic Fox. Just tie that right in. Now, on a lot of flies, you don't want a big bump back here where you're tying the materials in, but on this one, it's not as critical because there's going to be uh, a bunch of materials tied in right here at the back, and then we're going to tie our foam in that's going to fold over the rest of the materials. So um, that's why I'm trimming all this off right, right at the back. Now, in order to keep this uh, tail riding how it should, um, some people put like a mono loop underneath the tail. I'm really a fan of just making like the a parachute, you know, some parachute wraps right at the back of the tail. And that'll keep it propped up nice. And then I'm going to I'm going to color the tail a little bit. So if I pull the tail tight, I'm going to come in here with a Sharpie and just kind of barely tap each side and because it's a natural material the marker will want to bleed a little bit and that's perfect you can also come in with a fine tip sharpie and give it some some accent marks as well these these are you know just barely visible kind of faint marks that will show up just a little bit Okay, now that we have that tied in, this is going to have some uh, mono eyes coming off the back. Uh, some of the epoxy eyes for the crab eyes. Um, but in order to get those to splay out at the proper angle, you need to build up a, a you know, kind of a bump of something right there. So I'm going to just take some, uh, some of this cactus chenille in hot orange and uh, make a bump right there. And instead of just wrapping back to my thread, I'm actually going to wrap the chenille over itself once or twice and tie that off. Alright, to tie the eyes in, I'm using these uh, epoxo mon epoxy mono crab eyes. These are the tan color. And they come in a pretty long, you know, piece of monofilament, so it's it's really easy to tie these in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie one in on one side, the other on the other side, and just kind of gauge it. You, you know, it, you just want those to be visible once you have the fly tied. So, you know, you can tie them further back if you want, or you can tie them closer. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in some Palmer chenille. So I just have some pink Palmer chenille. And I'll tie that in right behind the eyes. And now for this part, I'm going to tie in a piece of soft hackle. So I'll just hen hackle. I'm just using this India hen cape. Really cheap stuff. If you've got um, some of our Coq de Leon that we've sold before, that works as well. But I just have a, a piece of white. And I'm going to take this and tie it in by the tip. So I'll take the tip. And tie that in right behind my... Palmer chenille. Now before I wrap that I'm going to take those fibers and just pinch those back like this so that they lay down all facing the right way. And this is critical because my tie-in point is a pretty thick base. So if I were just to start wrapping the hackle it would be, you know, kind of want to go everywhere. But if you, if you, uh, you know, crease the fibers back, it will, they'll lay down quite a bit better. And I still have to stroke them a little bit as I go back. Now they're wanting to get everywhere. Okay, just like that. Okay. Now we're ready to tie in our foam, the, the gurgler piece of this. So, we've got pink on one side, tan on the other. And I'm going to tie it in so that the pink is facing down once I pull it over. And so, to get that, I'm going to tie the pink facing up. Now, you, you can see that I've cut the foam roughly the, the width of the hook gap. And I've tapered the end just a little bit to make it easy for tying in. So right at the edge of that crease, or the taper, is where I'm going to put the, the foam. And uh, just start with loose wraps and gradually tighten as you go back and as you go over the foam. Okay, so we've got it tied in. Um, now this is a really cool product that we've got. It's called Meridub. And so Meridub has synthetic fibers with marabou pieces mixed in with it. And this color is really cool because it's got tan and pink mixed together. So you see that? Uh, this is this color is called Bonefish Betty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a loop. And we're going to make the body out of the Meridub. And this is the the Stonfo dubbing tool. I don't know what it's called on our site. Curtis will use his nerdly powers to put the link in this uh, video somewhere. All right, so I'm just going to fill this loop up with the Meridub. Once I get it twisted up, it will kind of bind some of those materials down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dubbing teaser, and I'm going to come in here and just fluff those fibers back out. The Marabou will really pull out nice on this one. Okay, so once I have my loop, I'm going to show you a trick on this dubbing twister. The head turns down at a 90 degree angle so I can just wrap this uh, on the vise without having to, you know, hold the dubbing twister straight up. It just makes it a little bit easier, you know, probably totally unnecessary, but just a cool trick. The other thing to remember is when you wrap this body forward, see where my thread is. Uh, that's about as far forward as I want to go with the body because I'm going to pull this foam over and I want a good tie in point for it. So as I wrap this dubbing forward, I'm going to kind of preen it back so that the fibers are nice and, and free. Okay, once we have it tied in, we'll brush it downward. So now you can see how that you know that Meridub really comes to life here. 
And the cool thing about it is it looks really bulky right now, but the, the synthetic fibers of this Merida go almost translucent in the water. So when it gets wet is when it, it's really key. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to pull the, the Marabou over, and I'm not going to pull it straight over and just tie it in like this. I'm going to make a little bit of a, a bump in the back, so I pull it and push it backwards almost to the end of the, your body of your fly. And when you tie that in, it will create, it just it just allows you to, to add more foam to the body. It keeps it up uh, floating a little bit better. So I'm going to just pinch that, start with some loose wraps, and gradually get a little bit tighter. Okay, now I'm not going to just leave this face at this angle. Okay, it's too too far forward so I'm going to prop it up and in order to do that you've got to have something to to push it up so I'm going to take um, some uh, UV ice dub in UV tan and uh, make a bump of dubbing right there okay so I'm going to pull everything back and out of the way and just jam Probably more dubbing than you're used to putting in, in a small area like that. And that will hold that up nice and out of the way. So I've whip finished. Now I'm going to just cut a, a generous head. I mean this is something that you'll you can modify for the waters that you fish but you really want this to create a maximum amount of noise when you you know you know chug it just a little tiny bit. So I'm gonna put a pretty pretty beefy head on him. You just cut him straight across and then if you want you can come and trim up the edges. just like that. To finish it off I'm just going to take some of this really thin super glue and just pull the head down a tiny bit and it will seep all down and there it is. Just an easy saltwater gurgler.